Hello, I'm Kate Smurthways and I'm an angry left-wing feminist and I've managed to get hold of a copy of Boris Johnson's car review book, Life in the Fast Lane. So I've invited some of my celebrity friends and even a few ordinary people like you at home to give it a read and play a fun game called How Much of Life in the Fast Lane Can You Read Aloud Before You Start to Feel Physically Sick? And we have provided a bucket just in case. So, action. Life in the Fast Lane by Boris Johnson. <laughs> so, because it's such an incredible book, I'm just going to open any page because I know it will be, there will be wisdom. I was proud to drive the Targa. It's gorgeous. I urge you to go out and get one. So get a Targa. <laughs> Just get it. Oh, I can't make that. Okay. The gorgeous 18 year old girls scrambled into the back of the Jaguar and ordered me to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making that. <laughs> That's the tomorrow for you. They say tomorrow never comes, but she certainly goes. <laughs> oh, that was disgusting. <laughs> whether she saw me, I do not know. And whether this blonde was aware that she had been engaged in a test of a man's waning virility, I neither know nor care. But I tell you this, my alpha took her from behind. And I fairly thrummed it down into Dorking. Oh. Now you're Dorking! I congratulated myself. Is he allowed to do that or speak like that? At least it was pretty lethal if you were an apple. Only a few minutes ago I had fired at a large granny smith and the results were very nasty. Poor apple. And poor me reading this. <laughs> the last time it happened was about 6.30pm in the fast lane of the A40 and I had to be pushed by two policemen uh, before he cut their um, expenses. Amid the <laughs> desire of the entire traffic jam, but now I was stuck on the A308 in a desolate wheelchair and I, as I passed one boarded up gas station after another dashboard seen ever more incense. This is so dull I'm falling asleep as I'm reading it. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna finish there. Cool, nice job. It gusts round the cockpit, it riffles my hair and whips up some documents high in the air. Oh my word, it's the essays, they've gone in the breeze. They blind a meat pie mat van, they paper the trees. Up snatched by the wind gods, they flutter and soar and blizzard the side of the A404. <laughs> you remember in Richmond Compton's, Compton's Just William books, when William gets a penknife that has one of those special blades for getting the stones out of horses' hooves. He feels a bit depressed about this accessory, then it hits him that he must get a horse to go with it. That's how you will feel. A couple of days sitting at the wheel of the Voyager and you'll be yearning to punch out some babies to go with the cup holders. Oh, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, there's, a, there's like a big bit of writing there which I'm also going to read and it might just, it might just be the last straw. You don't just sit down in this murk. You can twizzle your seat up down, forwards and back, although as though working your way through a sex manual with an uncomplaining and untiring partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did you make me do this, Kate? <laughs> Suburban beamers flashed and honked 
and her rump wiggled away for the last time. Perhaps I might have caught up with her eventually, except that just then, without warning, my five-year-old child vomited all over the black seat, <laughs> including the magnesium structure and submarining beam. Next time, give me a gear stick. I say, this is jolly good. I think I'll vote for it. <laughs>